Hello everyone. It's, well, it's not Tuesday. It's September 18th, 2013, and it's Wednesday! Harp Wednesday. I actually recorded a Harp Tuesday episode yesterday, but I had uh, some wrong settings on my preamp, and so the sound quality wasn't quite as good as I wanted. So I'm going to record this again, and hopefully it turns out okay. And this, of course, is the third and last look at some of my favorite etudes. Uh, last two episodes I talked about some Buxa etudes, and this week I'm going to talk about a couple other etudes that are maybe, I've, I've performed them, and, and they maybe kind of feel like complete pieces in a different way, but they're also very much etudes in the sense that they're focusing on um, and giving you a good practice on one particular pattern or technique. So I'm going to start by talking about Hasselmann's Le Source, or The Brook. You can find it in a number of collections, I think, including this album of solo pieces for the harp. And one, I wanted to mention that in this particular edition, at least, it seems to be missing this one tiny little section right towards the end where, in another version, we have this nice extra little bit where we get a D-sharp. And Anyway, just something to maybe be aware of. So the piece itself starts with a little bit of introductory material. And a great, that basically the whole piece, and a great practice for these downwards arpeggios. Sometimes, of course, maybe our upwards arpeggios feel better because we're used to rolling chords. So that something like that might feel easier. But ideally, we can play a downwards roll just as well as we can play an upwards roll. And this, of course, is a great way to practice that if it's not quite as comfortable as you might like. And so basically anything that you do in terms of trying to make things loud and fast and even, so whatever you find works for you, um, you know, playing it slowly and, and articulating well and using some strength. basically the piece and the other thing to be aware of like I talked about in that one box etude is the fact that we have a tune going on and so bringing that out but not to the extent that it becomes too much right so that we want to hear that tune but it's fairly easy to hear it because it's on the downbeat and and the way it's written it, it comes through pretty well, so we don't have to do a ton to bring it out. And at the same time, we do want to be aware of this constant sort of rippling 32nd note underneath it. 
so that we hear this. So just being just being aware of that balance there uh, of, of bringing out the tune, but at the same time making sure that the accompaniment is really present. And the final thing is, I know for me when I record it. Um, Sometimes what I'll notice is that I may be waiting a little bit too long when I, for example, do two right hand uh, sections in a row. I maybe feel like I want to delay that second one a little bit and I don't think I should. So just I, I, I tell myself then once I become aware of that to just make sure that I only slow down when I really want to and that I keep a sense of moving forward throughout most of it. Especially on some of those transitions from maybe low to high when the right hand is doing two, two notes, in a row, two, uh, two sections in a row. So anyway, there, there's that piece, which is a very effective piece, fairly short and, and quite nice. And the second one I want to talk about is the Etude de Concert by Felix Godefroy. Uh, this little etude in E flat minor. And again, it starts with some introductory material, uh, a little bit more extended this time. Good. So it's, we get a little, again, we get a little middle section where things change a little bit, but basically throughout this, we get this real workout for the right hand. Uh, unlike, for example, the Hasselmann's where at least the left hand is doing some of these, some of these downwards arpeggios. And the right hand is doing this. pattern, two sets of triplets, where uh, where you're doing this kind of interesting um, out of order placement. So for me, what, what I find is, is most comfortable is to, you know, when the thumb, thumb place four and three, but not two. So the two is kind of ready to get on the string. Um, and then it gets on. In other words, we could go strictly in order, right? But wow, that means we're having to replace a finger after each note and it's, it's going to take extra time. We could place everything on. But for some reason, I, I find that that there's a little bit extra strain to get two on, and it's more comfortable to almost have two on a string, but not so that I, I place all these. I place three, I go ahead and get three on there, even though it's not gonna play for a while. You know, one, four, get two on is four is playing. And then this is just, you know, one, two. continues continues on so that again you can break that down just practice one of these
again is even and as secure as possible. In this case, there's no tune to bring out in the right hand. The left hand kind of has the tune and it's got these uh, harmonics on top and a normal note on the bottom. So you're kind of thinking of open octave shape or a little bit of a curve in the hand, maybe a little bit more than we would have with an open octave. Oh, and it's a, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, I really like it. It gets quite intense at various times. It has a nice, nice forceful ending. And etudes and, and in particular those last two are ones that I think make very nice concert pieces as well as exercises. So hopefully that's given you some food for thought and I will see you next week for something new. Cheers! Mm -hmm.